Hey, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about a YouTube end screen. What? Let's go. All right, so here I am in Resolve with the Fusion page and I'm gonna make a new Fusion composition. Go up to Media Pool, open that, and I'm gonna right click anywhere in the Media Pool and select New Fusion Composition. That's gonna bring up this little thing and let's actually do 20 seconds because a YouTube end screen can be 20 seconds long. Let's hit Create. Now I'll double click this in the media pool and that'll open up our blank composition. As usual, first thing that we do is start with a background node. I'll attach that background to the media out. And now we have a black background and everything's nice. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a background texture, which I'm gonna use this brickwall.jpg. I just got that from Unsplash. Grab the output of this and merge it over our background. And in the merge node, let's adjust the size and position here. So I'll zoom out just a touch until we see those edges. There we go. And I want some of that bottom. Yeah, something like that. I'll adjust the angle a little bit. There we go, that's looking nice. Now I wanna make some wooden boards that kind of come down here and hang, and the video thumbnails will appear on those. So I'm gonna use a wood texture. I'll grab that from the media pool and drag this down and merge it over stuff. Now we have our wood, that's cool. But I think what I'll actually do before we merge it over everything else is I'll merge this in its own little composition. Let's grab a background node, and I'm gonna merge this over a background node. And the reason for that is because I actually wanna use this background node as some little cables or ropes. So I'll select this merge and hit two on the keyboard to bring that up. And remember the merge controls how my foreground layer acts, like how big it is, where it appears and stuff. And so I can size this down and kind of move it around here. And I'll just make it pretty big on screen because we're gonna adjust this in a minute. But this background node, let's select that. And I'm gonna choose a different color, maybe like a dark gray. And the other thing I wanna do is mask this background node to make these little cables. This is just kind of a cheap way to do something simple like this. You could do this a bunch of different ways. I'll just do a rectangle node and connect that to our background, and then we'll just move this up. But we don't want this to be filled in, we just want the edges here. And so if we go to border width and boost that up a little bit, and then uncheck solid, now we have, if I turn off the underlay, now we have these little kind of cables or ropes or whatever, right? Just a quick way to do that. And I'll make this border width a little smaller. Something like that. Now it's like a little hanging wooden board thing. We could even get a little more detailed here and select this merge three, which controls our wooden board. And I'll grab a polygon mask. But before I connect it to our merge, I'll go up here, zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna trace these boards and just give this a little bit of character. Something like this. I'm just kind of adding a little shape on the sides to make these boards just a little bit uneven. Just Gives a little bit of character here. Bloop, maybe a little more subtle than that. And now, down in my nodes, I'll connect my polygon to my merge. We'll see what's happening up here. It's almost what we want, it's a little bit extreme. We'll just do a very subtle version of this. So now just the sides of that board aren't completely even. Maybe we'll even soften this edge just a touch, just so it's not super sharp. Just gives this a little bit more character. So now we kind of have this as its own little comp up here. This is our hanging wooden board, and we could take the output of this and just put it over our merge. And if we select media out and hit two on the keyboard, we have this kind of laid over it. One thing that's immediately apparent is that we need to have some kind of shadow here. So let's add a shadow after our comp here right before we merge it. I'll hit shift spacebar and type SHAD, and we can select drop shadow or shadow. Either one, let's select shadow. And I'll grab this and hold shift and drag this in between. And with my shadow node selected, can change the offset here and the softness and maybe bring down the alpha to 0.6 or so. Now we have just this nice little subtle shadow. Maybe I'll move it over a little. Kind of looks like it's there. So now that we have all of this made, if we select our merge, we can adjust the size and position really easily for this whole little mini comp here. So this will be something that pops down and we see our thumbnail, but how big do we make it? Where do we put it? There actually are limits to how big of a thumbnail we can put in a YouTube end screen and where it goes and stuff. So guess what? I made a little fancy thing. On my desktop here, I have a little preset, yt end screen guides dot setting. I'll grab this and just drag it in. And what this does, if we merge it over our other stuff, is give us a little guide about how big things can be for a YouTube end screen and where they can show up. Stuff can show up anywhere in this green box. This is the smallest 
thumbnail size, this is the biggest, and this is how big a sublink can be. If you want to adjust this a little bit, you can double click on this and open up the group here in the nodes and say grab the smallest thumbnail and move that around, but it just has to be within the green box. So this is a really nice way to figure out how big your backgrounds and graphics and stuff should be for the end screen. What I like to do is grab this merge and blend this down all the way so that we don't see it, and I can just blend it up and down to kind of check. So I'll grab this merge and I can move my little graphics around here and make sure that they're sized and everything so that it would look nice if we put a thumbnail of that size on there. So that's a good size. And then I gotta just make sure that this is within the green square and I'll maybe move it over just a little bit. Give us a little more room, something like that. But we should be able to put a YouTube thumbnail over that really easily. I'll turn off our guides. By the way, if you wanna download this YouTube preset, there is a link in the description. It's basically just a text file and just like I did, you just drag it in here and it will make these fancy notes. We don't need this anymore, so I'll get rid of it. So now we have one side. Let's duplicate this and make another space for a video. We don't have to do all this work again. All we have to do is let's copy and paste this merge because we have the sizing and position information in the merge. I'll hit Control C, double click out of here and hit Control V. And I'll hold down Shift and drag this in between my merge two and my media out. And I'll take right after our shadow and pipe that into our next merge. And we have a duplicate of this. Isn't that nice? It's so nice. So now we have two little thumbnail holders. One thing I wanna do is add some like little graffiti text here to kind of label what each of these are. So let's grab a text plus node and drag this down into our nodes and we'll merge it over stuff. Select this text and up here in our inspector, we'll say last video and you can use whatever font you want. I'm gonna use one called dry brush. Yeah, we'll just put this like here and we'll duplicate this text. Control C, click off Control V and merge that over too. And this is where you click for more cats, which is doing a good service to the internet. All right, so this is pretty good so far. I like it, but I'm not crazy about the red. So why don't we change that? I usually like more of cool colors and teals and such. Let's go back to our media in one. That is our red bricks. And let's grab a color corrector node and put that in between media one and our merge. And with our color corrector node, we can go over here to where it says hue and we can change that and it will just shift the colors. Isn't that nice? Let's do like a tealish. I'll take down the saturation a little bit, keep it tasteful, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Might even bring the gamma down just a touch. There we go. And you can kind of tweak this to your liking. I don't know, something like that maybe. However you like it. Now that we have this basically looking how we want, we can animate it, which is like the whole point of doing something in Fusion. So what I think I want to happen is for each of these little thumbnail things to kind of come down into frame. So super easy. Let's have that all happen in about one second or so. So I'm gonna go to like 30 frames somewhere in there. And I'm gonna set a keyframe for each of these merge nodes. Down here, that is merge two and merge two one. So let's grab merge two. Let's actually rename this. I'll call this left board and this will be right board. Now let's select each of these and go up to our inspector and we're gonna keyframe center for left board and select right board, keyframe center for right board. So we're saying at 30 frames, we want the center to be right here. So basically we want these to end up right where they're at. And then over at zero frames, we're just gonna take each of these and just push them up. Something like that. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so that works, but it's not the most interesting. It'd be a little more interesting if they moved, you know, maybe one and then the other. Easy way to change that is in the keyframes panel. Up here in the upper right hand corner, I'll click on keyframes. That'll pop open a panel here. And this is just the timing of everything that's animated. Let's say we want the right board to come in a little bit after the left board. I'll select here where it says center and grab any of these points and just move it a little bit to the right. And now that'll kind of offset our animation up here. So if we play it back, we'll have one and then the other which is fine, but these come to a stop too quickly and it's not very natural. So let's change this animation to be a little bit more smooth. That happens in the spline panel. So I'll close my keyframes panel and open up the spline panel. And down here, let's just select anything that we want to change left board and right board and hit this zoom to fit button. That'll give us the graphs of the animation here. And what I'll do is select the last keyframe of each of these animations and I'll hit F on the keyboard. F is for flatten. So it takes this little handle and it makes it flat, which just means that this will eventually come to a stop just real gradually. Yeah, real nice, you know, just chilling. Right. Turn off our spline panel. Let's see how this looks. There, that's nice. 
And from here, you can go crazy and add a logo. You can add a little place for your little sub icon, but that's pretty much how I do it. Use the guide to figure out how big those elements can be, and you can just make a nice little background for it to sit on. Get all animated, looking pro. So there you go, not too bad, right? If you wanna learn more about making videos for YouTube, we actually have a specific guide on that right here. So check it out. Oh man, it teaches you all about how to do an unboxing video, which, you know, I don't know if you're into unboxing videos. Have they ever done an unbagging video? Are there any horse socks? <laughs>